TT Meets TT, Season 2, Episode 1, The Wee Scottish Beastie. Hi all, Andy here and welcome back to Season 2, Episode 1 of TT Meets TT. And today we have got a very, very special car. One that is producing over 500 brake horsepower. Yep, you heard me right, 500 brake horsepower. And this belongs to Gordon in Scotland. Once again, due to the distance, this episode of TT Meets TT is taking place virtually. So grab a drink, sit back, and let Gordon tell you all about this magnificent car. Thanks all for joining us tonight. So this is episode one of season two of TT Meets TT, and I'm delighted to be joined this evening by Gordon, all the way from Bonnie, Scotland, and his amazing Mark 1 TT. How are you doing then, Gordon? I'm good, mate. I'm good. How about yourself? Good. Yeah, yeah, I'm all good. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to hearing all about this amazing Mark 1 TT that's knocking out, am I right in saying 500 brake horsepower? 514 oh, sorry. is the best it's done. Oh, right. That's, uh, we don't want to knock those 14 off. No, no, that, that level. makes all the difference. <laughs> absolutely right. Absolutely right. Just listen to this. If you can give me a bit of background about the car and how you acquired it. Yeah, so when I was in my 20s, I owned a 2000 plate TT. Absolutely loved it. And as you know, when you're, you know, young, it's it was a hairdresser's car, uh, as they're well known. And I thought, I always loved that car. Um, so when lockdown hit, just sitting there scrolling through eBay and up popped this one. Um, and it was fairly local to me. And he, he says, look, if you come down, you'll buy it. And as soon as I seen it sat in the car park, I was like, I'm, I'm taking that home. It was lowered on just springs, supposedly a stage one tune on it, which as soon as I took out for a test drive, I discovered it definitely had a stage one tune on it. Um, but the thing that sold me was the Vortex kit on it. I'd never seen a TT with that. The BBS wheels, I thought, you know what? I could, I could do something with this. Then I was introduced to Lewis Battersby, and the rest was history. Right. So we're saying that that car, when you pick that car up, it's, well, a standard 225 with a map, but it was a 225 yeah. engine. So yes. that was the base. So as it stands today with that 500 brake horsepower, mm -hmm. is that still the the bare bones of the original 1.8 turbo, or has it been completely ripped out? And so was, um, the middle of Scotland, and Lewis, he is away up north. So it was either take the car up to him, he takes the engine out, you know, and works his magic, um, or he sources me another block, does all the work up there, and then take the car up, and it's basically swapping that block over. So that's what I opted for. Um, so there's 174,000 miles on that shell. He sourced me an engine, I think it was with 120,000 miles, but it didn't really matter because it was getting stripped to the bare bones anyway and then rebuilt and we've managed to get it nicely painted and you know all the fancy bits on it yeah i mean it does from what i've seen from the pictures under the bonnet it looks as good as it performs you know it's it's got some yeah. great hoses some great color scheme on it yeah so do you want to just run through us the mods that you've actually had done to that engine so if you take us yeah. from the the 225 yeah. to what it is now at right. 514 yeah so met lewis and we decided we'd go hybrid turbo, you know, quick spooling. So we done that. Uh, at that point, I had super tech exhaust valve train, full lot, uh, King's race bearings, um, full three inch system all the way through, uh, stainless steel, um, a big front mount welly cooler. We also put meth on it at that point. What else? Uh, obviously, forged rods. Um, we put 500 cc injectors in it, uh, Bosch 500 cc injectors. I uh, operated the clutch um, to a three paddle, I think it is, clutch, um, so that every day it, you can drive it about the town. It, it's not heavy, 
you know, it's, it's all right, but it takes that power. And I think we made 320. And the thing went, it was brilliant. But I was like, you can buy cars out of the factory at that. Nothing that Lewis had done wrong. He was, he was spot on, you know, like he had built it well. Got it back, ragged it about the back roads, liked it, but then I was, I was always wanting more. So what we did was it went back up to Aberdeen. And this time we went for a G25 660 Pulsar Turbo. And the reason I went for Pulsar as opposed to the Garrett, it was price. And I have yet to hear of any Pulsar Turbos failing. So I said, you know what, let's go for it. Bought it off a boy online for pennies. He just couldn't get rid of it. Bought it brand spanking new in the box. And at that point, Lucy's work got really busy. So he introduced me to Phil Poole, who owns P6 Performance. And my goodness, that man knows his stuff. So told him what I wanted. He says, if you've got the budget, I can make it happen. Bounced the figures about, we done it, and sent the car up. Now, I had a manifold custom made uh, from overseas. It came and it was useless. And I'd spent a lot of money on this manifold and feels like it, it ain't straight. So of course I feel sick. He's like, but don't worry, everything can be fixed. So he machined it all, well, sent it away, got it all machined. Uh, re-welded it, everything, made it super strong and then once it was all built we had custom intakes, we then added another port of meth, so it's twin port meth, um, we uprated the injectors to 1000 cc, we uprated the fuel lines, everything because Phil says this is going to be a monster. So I got it back uh, Lewis mapped it on the 7.5 uh, ECU, but he kept going, Gordon, you, you really need to go Ignatron. And I'm going, yeah, but that's, that's that's a lot of money. And he's going, right, he says, so we got it to 390, I think it was. And I'm thinking, gosh, it was fast, but I had this magical number in my head, and you should never aim for numbers, ever. But I had this 500 in my head. So Lewis was like, get Ignatron, that's what's holding it back. So I did, I got Ignatron and went south this time. <laughs> I went and seen uh, Nick at Decimal Tense and Top Boy uh, all day on the dyno. tuning Ignatron um, and then at about five o'clock at night poor guy had been working on it all day fuel pump failure and he's I'm like I've, I've got a long drive home mate and yeah. um, him and his team never seen anything like it he says we can get you home he says this is what we've got so he upgraded the fuel pump um, and I left with 4.30, but we just run out of, out of time. You know, he goes, it's got more in it, he says, but I've mapped it so you can get it home. Drove it home, loved it. Those back roads all the way home, fantastic. Car really felt alive now. Um, also, it's really cool having the Ignatron tablet and stuff. Ran it for a few weeks, then I thought, right, I'd heard Bill down at Badger 5 does remote mapping. I said, right, message done, all done over messenger. He's like, right, send me a log. Sent the log down, tweaked it, tweaked it, tweaked it. And then the cold weather came and I said, I'm going to do some power runs. And that's when we had the 514 BHP with 470 foot pound of torque out of a car that looks unassuming. You know, it's not screaming out boy racer. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, it's reliable. Yeah. It literally fires up every single time. 
cruises about the town, no problem. Um, but when you put your foot down, you're literally holding the steering wheel and looking as far down the road as you can because very, very quickly you get up to speed. So brilliant. Nice. And I would say that that car of yours, it looks the part as much as sounds and goes the part. I mean, with that Votex kit, so that's completely from the factory of the Votex. Yeah, that, that, yeah, I've got the invoice in that from new. So I've got loads of history with it. And yeah, um, it just looks different, you know, and, and I think the, the Avis Silver, um, I don't know if you, you noticed on the videos and stuff like that, but like yeah. it almost comes a bluish tinge to it when the light hits it. So it's... Yeah. It's nice. I've seen a couple of red ones around, but you, uh, right. but but uh, yeah, seeing it in Avis is yeah, it's it looks the business. It really does. And so I see you've got a different exhaust system on at the back. So looks notice the tail parts. What exhaust are you running on? That? Yeah, so it's a custom made downpipe, a custom made cat delete, and then it goes on to believe it or not a gravity system. Um, and again, it was it was cost saving. You know, I, I'm a guy with a family. I thought, you know what, I'll put that on it, and it flows well, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with it. A wee bit rumbly on the motorway, but, you know, when you're you're revving and stuff, it sounds lovely, so. Have you got, I know that people that really push the limits of these cars, Yeah. there's always something else you want to do. Is there anything else you want to do to that car? Yeah. I, I would love to stroke it. Right. Um, you'll, you'll be well aware of the red TT with Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. He strokered that, and... I've watched the video over and over again, and the way the torque onset comes on, I'm thinking that would be worth doing. Now, I've, I've spoke to a few people, but I had no idea how much work is involved to do that. So that would be on my wish list. If I could do anything to it, uh, I'd also thought about putting nitrous through it, just for an extra maybe 50 break, you know, nothing mental. Yeah. But at the end of the day, at the moment, it's fast, it's reliable, and I think you can push them too far and, and then they go bang. Yeah. Totally you agree know. with that. Yeah. yeah. Um so the the biggest brake horsepower one I've seen locally to me, right down the mm. other end of the country, um, yeah. is uh, base not too far away from me i think in hastings and that's about i think he's pushing for 65 right and he, right. he said the same thing it, it's got to the level that you it's it's still an everyday car he can get yes. in it he can drive it and you yeah. can push them too far yeah you can't um, yeah it. i yeah. totally get that and um yeah. i think i think what you've done to the car is immense i mean i think all hats off to you for that you know you've uh you've really you've really taken that car and turned it into something very unique and and something that looks very, very far. So at uh, some point in the future, I hope I get to see it in the flesh. I'm sure I will. Yeah, absolutely. So with your car, has there been any mods that you've done that you regretted or wish you'd never started? Yeah. If, I, if I'm being honest, um, I wouldn't do a seat delete again. Um, the reason <laughs> is um, it's called the selfish car. So because the, I can go in it and somebody else it means that my children can't go in the back uh, and i've got two so i can't even take the kids in it yeah so it does seem very selfish um and yeah it looks cool um but i think i would keep the keep the rear seats because my kids are just taught you i should have kept them yeah. the back seat is it's just for show really it's but good for it, carrying your shopping that's about yes. it but um, yeah that, that that's it that's yeah. it thanks again for joining me tonight gordon and take care and see you soon Thank you. Take care. It's always great to see exactly how far people can take these wonderful cars without pushing them too far. I think Gordon has created a truly unique car and shows that incremental progress is sometimes the best way to reach your lofty goals. I love a Votex TT and the work under the bonnet really does complement its looks. The brakes and the BBS alloys also add to that racy feel. As with most things, Gordon feels like it's mission accomplished and is therefore now looking to sell the car and look for a new challenge. So if you are in the market for a highly modified, high performance and extremely fast Mark 1 Audi TT, please get in touch with Gordon on Instagram at TTBullet or leave him a comment below to express your interest. Thanks once again Gordon for sharing your car with us and I personally think it's completely bonkers that that car is producing over twice the horsepower that it left the factory with. 
If you too would like to feature your car on an episode of TT Meets TT, then why not drop me an email at the address on screen now. If you've enjoyed this episode of TT Meets TT, then why not give the video a thumbs up and also think about subscribing to my channel if you've not already done so, where you'll find a whole host of content on the Audi TT Mark 1, as well as season one of TT Meets TT. As always, thanks for watching and see you soon. Take care.